Ambition, a strong desire to do or to achieve something typically requiring determination and hard work. You are ambitious. I am ambitious. We are all ambitious. We all desire to accomplish something in this life that we're living. But we live in a world now where a lot of people try to put a bad light on ambition as if it is bad to be ambitious. And this mostly happens because a lot of people link ambition with money. So if you are ambitious, then people think that you're just hungry for money. And a lot of people also view money as the root of all evil. A lot of people feel lazy and virtuous at the same time because you know they're not ambitious and so that means that they're not hungry for money which means that they're not technically evil that's what a lot of people believe which is why they view ambition as a bad thing and they feel virtuous for not being ambitious and for just being lazy and going about life settling for less but obviously just like anything it could either be a good thing or it could be a bad thing it just depends on the type of person that is ambitious just like water right we all have water in our home well hopefully if you're watching this you have water in your home we all use it to drink water right to get rid of the thirst we give it to our mom or our sister or brother or our friends you'll hear drink some water to get rid of that thirst but we could also use water to drown someone so you could use water to help but you could also use it to hurt someone else ambition is the same way ambition can be used in a negative way by you know hurting people in order for you to get what you want or you know abandoning the people who were with you throughout the journey those are ways that ambition can be negative because it ruins you it corrupts you as a person it gets rid of your morals and your values and you start to become a whole different person because you're so ambitious but ambition can be used as a good thing right it's one of the reasons why we have skyscrapers right how skyscrapers were built by people who were ambitious is the reason why we can create businesses that can help other people's lives be a lot more better we can create tools to make other people's lives easier everyone is essentially ambitious but there are also others out there who are lazy at the same time and you probably think to yourself how can this be if you are ambitious you can't be lazy if you have ambition that should cancel out the laziness that you have you might think it's not possible to be both things like i said i believe that everybody is ambitious but there's a lot of people out there who don't know what to be ambitious about as an example i can't be ambitious about medicine i can't be ambitious about being the best doctor or the best surgeon in my city because it doesn't interest me at one point i was ambitious about becoming a great boxer i was training all the time and laziness was not an option laziness was not even a thing in my mind when i was training during this time because it did interest me i had ambition towards that goal i can be an ambitious person but that doesn't mean that i'm going to be ambitious about painting or about art you know singing or acting for a lot of people their problem is not that they're lazy their problem is, is that they don't know what to be ambitious about and so what they do is that instead of spending time to find that thing that gives them ambition that gives them the energy to be ambitious about that thing instead they go on to follow the normal route that they were given they go on to become ambitious about something that they don't generally have ambition for but someone else does and so because someone else has ambitious for that thing they follow that path so they go to school they get the good grades they get the job and then they retire by the time they're 70 years old in the end they feel miserable and unfulfilled because instead of finding the thing that they are ambitious about they instead follow the normal route that they were given the big problem behind all of this is that a lot of people to be honest are closed-minded they don't allow themselves to explore to try and experience different things and since because they are closed-minded they don't actually find out what it is that they're ambitious about because they do have ambition but they don't know what it is so they stay stuck in the same spot watching other people master their craft while they sit on the sidelines wishing they could do the same and then years pass by and they end up reaching an age like they're 70 80 years old they are here you know their back is hurting their bones are hurting they got arthritis and they're just reminiscing about the days when they had all that ambition all that energy but they didn't know where to place it when i first started learning about entrepreneurship i've told the story before of how i graduated high school and i you know even graduated early and i didn't even know what the hell i wanted to do with my life but I wanted to do something that was on my own. I didn't really want to follow the normal college route. And so I was trying to learn from everybody, right? I was learning from different mentors. Some I would watch for free and some that I would actually pay for. And I came across one mentor I remember who told a story of how he succeeded after realizing that college was not for him. He was going to college following the traditional route that his parents had told him to. And while he was in college, he came across a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that book is like the starter pack for like entrepreneurs. And so after he read that book, he realized the potential that there is in the real world the potential that he didn't know the potential that college didn't tell him school doesn't tell him a lot of the things that that book says school does not tell you at all and so that is like a new world when you read that book and so that's what happened to him and he realized that he wanted to become financially free but college wasn't going to get him there the problem was that he didn't know where to start as you guys all know when it comes to financial freedom or the path towards it there are many different ways to get there right back like 40 years ago there was specifically a certain route you need to take but nowadays 
with the amount of technology that we have, new apps are coming out, new inventions are coming out. Many people out there are making six figures online, you know, learning a skill online. There's so many different ways to become financially free. He felt overwhelmed, just like anybody else would feel overwhelmed to know that there's so many different paths to take, but you just don't know what path to take. So he started experimenting. He started trying sales, trading, e-commerce. He tried it all. And then he came across real estate. And when he started to read more books about it and research more about real estate, his interest grew at the same time. And so he ended up going on Google and Googling real estate investing in his city where he was living at the time. And he ended up coming across a forum. I think, I believe it was Bigger Pockets. And when he went to that forum, he ended up meeting a guy on that forum who was a real estate investor for over a decade and he had already acquired properties he had done you know wholesaling you know investing in properties flipping and when he came across that guy he messaged him about wanting to learn more about real estate he told him that he was a broke college student but he was willing to learn long story short he ended up working for that guy for free so he could learn the in and outs of real estate and after a while of learning he was hooked in the span of six to twelve months he went from knowing a little bit about real estate to knowing everything that he can know about real estate and becoming a real estate investor himself. He found a passion for real estate and he decided that he was going to drop everything and just focus fully on it. Just go all in on real estate investing. And eventually, by the time he was 21, he had already had his own investment property for the first time. And now, fast forward to today, he is a you know multi-millionaire. He's in his late 20s and he continues to work on real estate because that is the thing that he loves to do and he has strong ambition for. Ambition is what led to the creation of cars, phones, airplanes, the electricity that's running through your home. Ambition is not a bad thing unless you let it corrupt you as a person or you hurt others in the process of you being ambitious. Ambition can be a good thing if you use it to change your life, to help those around you or to help those around the world. Your problem is that you don't know what it is to be ambitious about and your solution is to become a temporary mad scientist. A mad scientist has many qualities that, you know, some are not that beneficial, but there's one quality that a mad scientist has, or actually two, and it is that they are open-minded and they are willing to experiment. You see, a mad scientist, he tries many different formulas, he does many different experiments, and one he tries, he fails, he tries another one, he fails, until he tries one that ends up succeeding and he sticks to that one formula or experiment that ended up succeeding. To be a mad scientist, you have to be open-minded. You cannot afford to be closed-minded because it won't help you out at all. You need to get rid of this black and white mindset because there are many paths that you could take in life. There's no such thing as the one correct path to take. Becoming a temporary mad scientist helps you discover the thing that you want to be ambitious about. You will find where you want to channel your energy towards and once you find something that you are good at and that you also enjoy, you're gonna naturally get up and work on it and not be lazy anymore. One important thing I do want to point out is that this is only for people who have no idea what they want to do with their life, but they have a strong desire to accomplish something in their life. They just don't know what it is. If you already know what you want to do with your life, then don't do this because this will ruin the plans that you currently have. The good thing about experimentation is that at least you tried that thing, that skill or that field, and you will know whether you like it or not, whether you're good at it or not. And so later on in life, you won't be stuck with a lot of what ifs in your mind. But one thing I do want to point out is that if you are young, like if you're in your 20s or even better, if you are in your late teens, this will be extremely beneficial to you. The primary goal is to try different things until you come across that one thing that sparks that fire within you and that won't allow you to be lazy daily anymore. Find the thing that lights you up. For some people, it's real estate. For some people, it's trading. For some people, it's sales. For some people, it's YouTube. For some people, it's editing videos, building a business, copywriting. And you want to know what is an easy way to get to know about a subject without investing years in it? reading books. So go ahead and buy books. There are books on real estate, on SMMA, on copywriting, on YouTube. There's really books about anything, anything that you are curious about, go and buy a book and read about it and then see if it interests you or not. See if it's boring, if it's your thing, if it's not your thing and it's boring at the same time, then don't, you know, get into that subject no more and then move on to the next one. I've bought books on real estate, on sales, on social media, and I've gotten to know the subjects just by reading the books without investing years on it. Now, the internet is low key like a portal because you you could go on the internet and literally learn anything it is that you want to learn about like any subject that you have in mind you could go on the internet and literally learn about it it's like you're entering a whole different world once you go on the internet so use the internet portal watch youtube videos on subjects buy courses or mentorships on subjects become an open-minded student now once you do these things if you still find yourself being lazy then ask yourself these two questions is the pain of staying the same less than the pain of change visualize the life that you're currently living and then ask yourself if you are okay with it and if you are then that's 
that's fine don't do anything about it but if you're not okay with it then you got to do something different right now or in a couple of years from now your life is still going to be the same and you're going to look at yourself in the mirror and you're going to wish that you had done something different years ago some people already know what they want to do but they still find themselves being lazy and sometimes you just need to really ask yourself if this reality that you're living right now is painful because if it's not then you're not going to do anything to change you know there's really a lot of truth in the saying that you won't change until the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of changing and the second question you need to ask yourself is are you merely interested or are you actually committed if you are only interested then you need to make sure that you have these four ingredients so that you move from being interested only to now being committed one is a burning desire many people are only interested and not committed because they lack a burning desire if you truly desire something so badly you will do anything to commit to it so make sure that you have a burning desire for the thing that you want create meaningful goals and don't chase superficial goals and don't chase someone else's goal either number two critical tasks committing to something is hard especially if you don't even have any idea what it is that you need to do you might have a goal in mind you probably already know what to be ambitious about but you don't even know where to start so make sure that you find the critical tasks that you need to do and then create a plan on how you're going to achieve those tasks day to day make sure that you create structure in your day as well because if you're someone who's lazy naturally and like you struggle with it a lot having no structure in your day or any routine is going to make it even worse so make sure that you create a routine and structure in your day so that you get those tasks done throughout your day number three count the cost anything that we want to commit to has its own cost this can be money time energy risk you might need to spend money you might need to spend less time with your friends whatever it may be everything that we commit to has its own cost and you need to be aware of what those costs are so that when you finally embark on that journey you're not surprised or you're not discouraged when you find out that you might need to spend less time with your friends or you might need to spend a little bit of money in order to get this thing going and number four act on your commitments with discipline even if you have a burning desire there are going to be times where you don't feel like doing anything this can be waking up early going to the gym reading that book or getting those critical tasks done in your day in these moments you need to apply discipline the way i look at it is like this imagine i want to start a fire let's say the fire is the desire and the wood is discipline in order to start the fire i can't you know just add wood on it and expect the fire to start i first need to start that fire and then once i start that fire i need to start adding wood to it so that the fire can continue to you know burst in flames and continue to you know keep itself up and because if i don't add any wood and i just you know light up the fire and then you know it starts flaming up a little bit if i leave it for a bit of time it's gonna get you know put out eventually because you know you need to put more wood in order for the fire to continue and so the wood which is the discipline needs to be added on the fire which is the burning desire in order for the fire within you to be lit up that is the same way you should view yourself as desire and discipline working with each other you can't just rely solely on desire or solely on discipline you need to make sure you have both in order that it can work in your favor the last thing i want to point out is that you need to be careful and not staying stuck in the mad sciences phase in 365 days or even in two years you would have already explored many different subjects you would have have explored many different skill sets many different fields and by that point you should have already identified the thing that you are ambitious about and then once you already know what that is you should just focus on that thing and not try to go on to a different thing because the goal of this is to find out what it is that you're ambitious about if you already found it why go on to the next thing you're gonna ruin it for yourself when you're becoming a mad scientist temporarily during this time you are not drifting because you are intentionally experimenting to see what it is that works for you and what it is that you actually want to be ambitious about notice how one of my previous mentors had tried different things and then he came across real estate and when he found out that he actually liked it he had a lot of interest for it and that he was actually good at it he stuck with it he didn't go on to something different right like he didn't find out about real estate and then found out that he liked it and that he was good at it and then was like you know what let me go try smma or let me go try copywriting he didn't do that he stuck with real estate because his mission was accomplished he found what he was ambitious about the goal is not to try everything because you won't the goal is to try almost everything because at a certain point while you're trying almost everything you're going to come across the thing that you're ambitious about you're going to come across the thing that you are good at and that you also enjoy doing and once you come across that thing stick with it focus only on that thing and then stop the mad scientist phase become open-minded this is something that actually helped me in my life to find out what it is that i'm actually ambitious for what it is that i'm good at and that i also enjoy doing and i know it's going to help you all as well now you're going to know what path to embark on now you're going to know where to channel that ambitious energy that you have but anyways that's all i have to say i'm out